Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Buerter. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate today the solemnity of the baptism of the Lord, the time when he begins his public ministry. We are also invited to share in this ministry of the Lord, but quite often we hold back, we hesitate. So we ask the Lord to forgive us our hesitations and help us to be better disciples of Christ. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came to teach us how to love and how to serve. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption Reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be pleasing to you. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not paid? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, Merciful love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, 
and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous men his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With, With joy, joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With, With joy, joy you will draw water, water from, from the wells of salvation. salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With, With joy, joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the one begotten by him. But this we know, that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who comes by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the witness because the Spirit is the truth. There are three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God, that he has borne witness to his Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. When he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For the past few weeks, we've been sitting around the crib of Jesus while his parents have been entertaining. Firstly, angels, and then shepherds, and magi. The focus of our liturgical celebrations have been on this wonderful baby, the incredible story of his birth. But suddenly today is a change of pace. Mark's gospel fast forwards through 30 years of the life of Jesus and suddenly stops here, the baptism of Jesus. We are told that no sooner had he come out of the water than the heavens were opened and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. The reason why I think this happens is that Mark is trying to connect the birth of Jesus with his mission, the incarnation, with the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. This baptism of water and spirit marks the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus. The anointing with the spirit is what empowered Jesus to do what he did. He went from here and he healed the sick. He reconciled humanity to God and he preached with words and his life the good news of God's salvation. It's useful for us to think back, to reflect on the why of the incarnation. What is the reason? Why is there a reason? between the incarnation, which we celebrate at Christmas, and the rest of the life of Jesus, including the painful and messy bits that culminate in the passion. In the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, there is a meditation on the incarnation of Jesus, and it starts out with the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, looking down on the people of the world. According to Ignatius, this is what the Trinity saw. Men and women being born and being laid to rest, some getting married and others getting divorced, the old and the young, the rich and the poor, the happy and the sad, and so many people, aimless, despairing, hateful, and killing so many undernourished, sick and dying, so many struggling with life and blind to any meaning. This is the vision of the world which the Trinity saw. They saw it 2,000 years ago before the incarnation, and they look down today 
and see a picture that's pretty much unchanged. The Trinity looking down on the world and seeing this suffering was moved to compassion. And not just compassion, but action. Their response to the suffering of the world was the incarnation. God entering into our reality to live it with us and to redeem it. Most of us are very good at sympathy, the ach shames that kind of trip off our lips so easily, but goes no further. We are not always so good with compassion, the suffering with another person. The incarnation is the, is the compassion of God made present and visible in our world. And the baptism of the Lord is the beginning of the public living out of that ministry of compassion. Despite the fact that I'm wearing white for the solemnity, this is also the first Sunday in ordinary time. The baptism of the Lord suddenly makes our ordinary time not so ordinary after all. Ordinary time is not simply week upon boring week of liturgical green. Now, ordinary time is a time for us to live out our own baptismal calling in the struggle of our lives, in our challenges, in our failures, and in our woundedness. It is our time to love, to serve, our time to live in joy. When you look at it like that, ordinary time is definitely not boring. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we were called to be God's children and to minister to one another. Let us therefore pray for ourselves, for one another, and for all of those in need of our prayers. For the church, that it may stand fast in the one faith to which it has been called, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the world, that all conflicts may cease and peace may reign in our hearts and lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a true spirit of humility and evangelization, that in our preaching, prayer, and example, we may always point away from ourselves and towards the living Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are blind to the, to the injustices of our world, that their eyes may be opened and that they may work for an end to oppression and injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, that we may love and serve one another in the same way that Christ loved and served us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Open the heavens, Almighty Father, 
and pour out your Spirit upon your people gathered in prayer. Renew in us the grace of our baptism so that we may reflect ever more faithfully the image of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God, God of freedom. With the mingling of this water and wine, where we come to share in the divinity of Christ to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the prayers and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the offerings of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of Him who willed in His compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan... You revealed both signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your words dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending and the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your Son, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you on earth, and before your majesty, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For well, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never stop calling a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly pray, by that same Spirit, make holy these gifts that we bring you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine, 
And again, giving you thanks and praise, he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant prayers we rely for help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Butti and Duncan our bishops, with the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait and joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. So my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but when you say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.